Good morning, saints. Welcome to God's Best and Worship Center. Every day is a wonderful day when we can wake up and praise God. Sundays is a special day because we get to come together in the house of the Lord and, and worship and praise and sing and, and, and fellowship. That's something that, that, that we can get in the outside world. Because in the day's time that, that people's not, people not rejoicing and praising the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as I begin this Sunday morning, I come to you in total surrender. We offer our worship and praise to you. For you are worthy. We lift our voices together to offer you all that is due to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now if you would turn with me to Ecclesiastes. Chapter 3. 1 through 8. Let me know when you get there. To everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to, to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. And a time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. Now, we are going to have the word today. The title is Faith in God's Control. King Solomon wrote this chapter, chapter 3, verse 1, at an old age. Our God is a God of time and season. He demonstrated this to us, the beginning. God created heaven and the earth day by the day on the six days and rested on the seventh day. He is the author of time and season. He mentioned that the time and season shall not cease as long as the earth remains. What is the message of Ecclesiastes 3 and 1? It is to inform us to trust God's judgment in all situations. Humans have mastered many things in this world, but some el uh, elimin eliminates of our existence or beyond our control. We cannot conquer time. God is the one who appoints each moment. Our lives contain a mixture of joy and sorrow, pleasure and pain, harmony and struggle, and life and death. Each season has its appropriate time in the cycle of life. 
Nothing stays the same. And we, as God's children, must learn to accept and adjust to ebb and flow of God's design. Some seasons are difficult, and we may not understand what God is doing. In those times, we must humbly submit to the Lord's plan and trust that he is working out his bond purposes. We just have to trust God's timing. Psalms 27, 14 reads, wait for this Lord, be strong, and take heart and wait for the Lord. And I will face in our fast-paced world, waiting is often seen as a burden to some people. They desire instant results, immediately success, and swift answers to our prayers. The story of King David reminds us that waiting is not a, a sign of weakness, but an opportunity for growth and trust in God's timing. We often find ourselves in seasons of, of waiting. We may be waiting for a breakthrough in our careers, for a life partner, for a healing, or for a door of opportunity to open. It is in these moments of uncertainty and anticipation that our character is refined and our trust in God deepens. Waiting teaches us patience, perseverance, and surrendering our desires to God's perfect plan. It reveals our dependence on Him and invites us to seek His guidance and wisdom. It is doing the the waiting that God offered molds, molds us into the person he wants us to be. Preparing us for the blessing and responsibilities ahead. As we wait, let us be encouraged by his blessings. Let us remember that God's timing is impeccable. And his ways are higher than ours. Jeremiah 29th Verse 11 says, for I know the thoughts that I have. Think, thank, thank you. Say the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. His promises are yea and, and amen. He releases these promises at will. And when pleased, he doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What you are going through. In various circumstances in our own lives, it may look like God is too slow. And we begin to read possible meanings. God never slumbers nor sleeps. He will show up in due season. There's a time to be born. Being born from birth to be made to be an image of God. The Bible states that of all God's creatures, including angels and animals, only human beings were created in the express image of God. Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 27 says, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and, and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. We were born in a sinful world. That's why Christians, we have to be born again. There are many benefits of being a born again child of God. 
The ultimate benefit is not having to go to hell and having a home in heaven forever. But there is there are so much more to salvation. It is not just a fire escape from hell. Romans 5, 1 through 2 talks about being justified by faith. To be justified means to render just. When we are justified, we have been declared free. Free from the power of sin. Free from the penalties of sin. And one day we will be free from the very presence of sin. We have been declared innocent. Innocent in the, in the eyes of God. Innocent in, in your actions. We have been declared righteous. Righteous because he is righteous. Righteous because his righteousness Job asked this question. How then can a man be justified with God? Or how can we be clean that is born of a woman? Job 25 and 4. Paul answered Job's question in Romans 3, 20 through 24. Jesus Christ is the justifier. He is the just one. He is the only one that can justify us. Some may ask, why only Christ? Because he is just. Justification can only be rendered by one that is just. That's why Paul wrote Romans 3, 28 saying, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. We have peace with God. The condition of man reveals his need for peace. It is a sin that, that breeds the quarrel, but also enmity, um, enemy, enmity. The Bible says because the carnal mind is enmity against God, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. So, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Enmity means hostility, hatred, ill will. God is not a, at peace with a sinner continuing in his sin. However, immediately upon the, the removal of sin, peace with God is made. That's why it's important to be born again. Because a time to die is near. I don't see death as an ending. I see it as a rebirth. Death isn't the end of someone because your soul can never die. Revelation 14 and 13 says, Bless are those who die in the Lord. Jesus was slain. He died for our sins. He prayed the, He paid the ultimate price for our sins. Even though he died, we can know that death is the entrance, entrance into eternal life. We need to rejoice to death. We shouldn't fear death in our lives. Praise God for the victories and the joy he brings in the midst of the world of sin and death. As every former knows, there is a time to plant and a time to pluck or harvest. But in the beginning, God was not only talking about the right seasons to plant a seed or the right season to harvest the crops. I believe this verse is also relevant to planting seeds when meeting new people. People in our lives Sharing God's word with others or words of, of advice to a stranger. Guidance and direction and helping each other is another means by which we plant seeds with our families, friends, and in our ministries and fellowshipping with our Christian families 
and non-Christian believers. All of us are planting seeds as we move about the four corners of this world. Think about, think about all of the interactions we have with other humans on an hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis. When God was in the flesh, Jesus, he walked the earth and went from village to village, to city to city, planting seeds. With his teaching and his ministry, and even in his conversations with strangers, he met along the way. God tells us there's a specific time to kill and a time to heal. In Exodus 20, 13, God clearly says, Thou shalt not murder. How then is there a time to kill? In the original Hebrew Bible, the word to kill translated to mean to cut down or stab. Cause to death, cause to die or put to death. In Genesis 4 and 8, sin brought the clay and death into the world. And it wasn't long before humans became involved in the act of killing. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. King Solomon recognizes that God controls the time and seasons of every human life. He is not advocating for capital punishment or mercy killings. The reality of life's seasons, some people die while others live, live on and are healed. A time to kill doesn't mean God's, God's giving us permission to go out and kill another human being. As Christians, we already know that that's not what God intended by a time to kill. In a life of being threatened in self-defense, we as humans have been programmed to take the necessary steps to kill in that life-threatening moment. A time to heal. Most of us that have been through many life hardships, whether it's childhood abuse, abandonment, a broken marriage, divorce, physical, loss of a child, spouse, or parent. We know all too well that healing takes time. God's time for healing Healing is by God's design for all of us so that we may turn to him in our weakest moments when we are feeling hopeless, powerless, and vulnerable. It is by God's designs that there's no way, no other way in healing but turning upward. Looking up and turning to him in our times of healing is also a part of his perfect plan. A time to weep, to laugh, to moan, and a time to dance. God's divine design of man, he knew when he created man of dust from the ground and breathed into the man's nostrils the breath of life. It was then that the man became a living creature. On the sixth day of the creation, he ordained us to take time to weep, to seek laughter in our lives, healthy for the soul, to take time to mourn for those we lose, or even to take the time to mourn the loss of a, of a lifestyle we once thought was the perfect life for us. And he didn't forget the importance to take time to dance. Each with his own timing and within his own season. Christians, looking back in your life, I know you can pinpoint exactly what season of life 
You wait, you wait. I do. But I but I found laughter to moan over losses. And when I could dance and celebrate that God loves me so much that he knows exactly what I need to do in each season of my life. Before I reached that season, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing and a time to refrain from embracing. What does God mean to cast away stones? There's a time in our lives where we need to clean away Cast out the old to prepare and make a way for the new. Many right now are in a season in their lives where the old ways needs to be cleaned out. Go away. The old door, our past, must close in order to open the new door. Your future. It's when we open new doors to our future when it's time to gather stones to build a new and better life by God's design. He also provides us a time to embrace relationships. Embracing also means to accept a new situation we are faced with in a specific season of our lives. God knows better than we do. It's time for us to embrace or to accept seasonal changes in our lives. God's divine nature for embracing, embracing seasonal changes is his seasonal changes throughout the earth. We have four seasons. Winter, spring, summer, and fall. We embrace these seasonal changes changes by preparing and looking forward to the upcoming season. In God's plans, there's a time to gain and a time to lose. There's a time to keep and a time to throw away. Many blame God when they when there, there's a time of loss in their lives. God has purpose for everything under heaven. What about the time God showed blessing to the blamer's life? There must be a trade-off to gain something. We must give something up in return. God means as a time or a season to lose because what we gain has blessings or so much better than what we had before. As a child of God, Christians, we have to be willing to give up things of this life in order to follow God's plan. For your life, you cannot have one foot in this world and the other foot in Christ. At times, you may feel like you are losing, ready to let go. Because you thought changing your life over to Christ was a walkthrough. But there's a lot of commitment that is involved in being the image of Christ. Understand that you are not alone. Christ is there. There's a time to, to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. God is quite clear on his timing of all things in this life. And for God's purpose, his plan for time for each of us only helps us to grow. And it evolved into the person he intended us to be. It is when we tear things down in our, set, in our lives, reap a part that which is not good for us. Get rid of the things in our lives that are not healthy for us that we actually become a better person. And before we can sow new things in our life, we need to tear up the well-known you. 
There's a time for silence. When you are quiet, God can change our thoughts. And when our thoughts change by God's hand, we, we mind our behavior in any situation. Have you ever been in a conversation that turned heated and found yourself becoming more and more angry? This is where God tells you to be silent. Because when we choose to be silent, we will not regret something we say out of anger. God knows how to calm the waters. A time to love and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. There's no misunderstanding throughout God's word that he encouraged all of mankind to first love him. And then to also love one another. Amos 5 and 15. God commands us to hate what is evil. And love what is good. We are to refuse to participate or practice the sins of this world. If we practice to follow the Ten Commandments, we can eliminate sin. When there is a time for war and a time for peace, God has made it very clear. There is a time for every purpose under the heavens. Remember. God's word applies to all of mankind. Every tribe and every nation and our every, every matter in this life to the end of time. We should savior the goodness of life and the ways God has gifted us with his favor. Trust that God knows the seasons in your life in which you will relish and endure. God alone will make things beautiful in due season and cause our lives to be abundant in meaning. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we pray that you would keep us all from ever approaching you without due honor, reverence, and fear and worship. Teach us to be silent, to guide our steps when we come before you, to listen and pray accordingly, and to pray with our words accordingly in Jesus' name. Amen.